Hey YouTube, West Sample here, JWS Repair Service. Man, it's a hot one today in Texas, so this is going to be short because I had to turn the fan off. Uh, had a couple of viewers asking the difference between a mixture enrichener and a choke. And while they are similar in their operation, they're definitely different in their hardware. So stay tuned and we're going to go through a little, uh, a little class and explain what the difference is. Stand by. Okay, we are back and we're going to talk about the difference between a mixture enrichener and a choke. Now, this is a carburetor that is off of a Honda Recon. Uh, this is one of the few that still uses an actual choke. And the choke itself you'll see right here in the throat. It's actually a butterfly valve, if I can get it turned just the right way, that closes. Now what that does is, even though your slide is, is down all the way, if you look down in there, if I hold it the right way, you'll be able to see that that slide is down all the way because I don't have uh, the cable in there. But your vacuum is going to be really, really high. Uh, what your choke is going to do is it's going to cut off the air supply to an extent, make it even higher vacuum, which is going to cause it to pull more fuel from this little bitty hole that's in there that is your idle mixture jet. So it's going to pull a little bit more fuel and air. Remember, motorcycle and ATV carburetors are unique in the fact that they combine air with the fuel in the jet. Unlike automotive type, which just meter fuel only, liquid fuel. Anyway, that is an actual choke. And that we would refer to that as a choke. Now, this is a, well, partially disassembled uh, carburetor off of a 450 Grizzly. Uh, I don't necessarily was going to put this one together on camera for you. This is very similar to one we've done before. But I just wanted to show you the difference in it. This has a mixture enrichener. This is only a throttle butterfly. Where it doesn't have a slide, it's actually got the butterfly in it. That if I turn the, the throttle here, you'll see that it's open in that. And boy, is that one stiff spring. But you'll notice on this side, there's, no, there's nothing here. So what you have instead of that is this little plunger. And this plunger has a couple of things that are important. No, don't drop it. Number one is this rubber sealing surface. There may or may not be an alignment pin in the center of it. Some of them are flat. Some of them have alignment pins. It's important if it does have an alignment pin, that alignment pin is straight. If it's bent, corroded, anything like that, it's going to have a problem of getting back and seated properly in there. So you may have to replace the plunger. This rubber o-ring around it, this is the sealing surface uh, for the where the fuel is trying to come through. That's important. And then this o-ring on the outside is where the air is coming through. So this seals it off so that air doesn't come through where the cable goes in, but it can only go through the air jet that's inside the carburetor. And I'll show you that in a minute. But this fits like this on your machine. You'll run your, your choke cable down through the nut. Now, if it's a Polaris, it may be a metal nut. Through the spring, pull your spring back. Your cable will extend through and put the, the cable through that hole, and then you'll clip it, and then the spring actually locks down on top of a little ledge that's there on that plunger, and it locks that cable in. So when you pull the choke, mixture and richner, it will pull this back and unseat it from inside the body of the carburetor. Now this is going to be a little difficult to see down in, uh, mainly because it's so far down in there. But if you look down in this hole, you may be able to see, oh there it is, you can see the hole. That's where that alignment pin or guide pin goes through. And the sealing surface is on the outside of that. And that's where it's allowing the mixture to go from there once the once the flow the valve opens comes through this hole right there uh turn it the other turn it the other way comes through the, dang it it's hard to do this backwards it comes through this hole right here behind the throttle blade so this is really this is the engine on this side and this is super high vacuum because it's on this side of the throttle blade the throttle blades close that's why you don't normally want to apply the throttle when you're trying to start one uh, with the mixture enrichener because basically all it does is it prevents the enrichener from working because your vacuum will suddenly drop 
when you do that. So normally if they're tuned correctly, you can cold start without hitting the throttle. Uh, but anyway, that's where it comes through. Now a couple of the passages that are in here, that's not what you want to look at. We want to look at the enrichment. yes. The passages that come through here, this is where the air comes into it. And I did have a viewer specifically ask me about a Polaris carburetor the other day. Polaris actually puts a jet in here. It's an air jet, but they screw an air jet in here, and that's where the air for the, uh, the enrichner circuit is coming from. The fuel, if we follow this chamber, uh, let's see, let's see where you can see it. Uh, this little thing, okay, there it is. This little protrusion here, that's actually the end of that guide pin where it comes in. So you can see that that's the chamber that that uh, plunger is running in. You can see this casting running down. It's plugged right here where they cross, cross drilled it. Right. Oh, one of these days I got to get somebody to video this for me. Uh, it's hard to find good help these days. But, oh, there it is. You can see where they cross drilled and plugged it, which brings it down into the bowl. You can see it here this chamber running across they cross drill there and you can see it opening up into the pilot circuit so it's still drawing its fuel from the the circuit that it's pre-metering how much fuel the enricher circuit can get because it's still got to go through your pilot jet or your slow speed jet however it's not going through the mixture screw so it's it's as much flow of fuel as you can get through your pilot screw it goes through this chamber mixes into the backside of the plunger that gets mixed with air from this side of the plunger so when you open your plunger comes back it puts that air fuel mixture right here in the venturi to help you with your cold start all right i hope that didn't bore everybody to death I almost well almost dozed off in the middle of it but i uh, appreciate you watching i hope this video helped if you've got any ideas for things you'd like to see, please let me know. Just jot that down in the comments. We'll try to accommodate those. We are a working shop, so all the things that you see that we're working on are actual customer units. So we can't always accommodate everything you want to see because we may not have that in at the time. But uh, this was a viewer suggestion. Uh, so we went ahead and got it done because I had an opportunity to do it. So I'm going to put this carburetor back together. And once again, we appreciate you watching. If you like what you saw, if you found it useful, hit that like button. If you want to make sure you can see more of this when we post it, hit the subscribe button. If you hit that little notification bell next to subscribe, you'll be one of the first to know when we post new content. You'll get a notification. You can check it out right then. You can catch us on our website at www.jwsrepairservices.com. And as always, have a great day, have a safe ride, and we'll catch you next time.